It is Friday, the sixth day of the weekly cycle. Thank you so much, friend, for joining me today. Thank you so much for your prayer support. February 9, 2024. A special preparation day to all of you. Welcome to our message. This is life eternal. What must I do to inherit life eternal and be saved? Let the Bible speak and let us read from the Holy Word of God. Our Father in heaven, I uphold and I affirm your truth through your word that you are the only true God, our Father, and that you have a Son, the only begotten divine Jesus, and that your spirit and the spirit of your Son is one spirit, our Holy Spirit. May your presence and power and may your holy life through your Son be experienced and be manifested through us, in us, with us, I pray. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Let us open our Bibles today in the, the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 10. And I would like to begin reading in verse number 17 from the King James Version Bible. Receive text, textus receptus, a reliable English translation. The Holy Scripture says, Mark 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This Business-minded person uses the word inherit as a legal term, as though it is the right of everyone, especially those who are called chosen people, to inherit indeed eternal life. And yes, it is a valid question. What shall I do, according to this rich young ruler, that I may inherit eternal life? Verse number 18, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God our Father. Not Trinity, God our Father. You see, friends, this truth is clear on this Jewish mind. The rich young ruler talking to the Son of the living God. Jesus will not accept the, the uh, flattery of this business person or this uh, uh, well-greeting good. Jesus, the Son of God, wants to reveal and emphasize that there is only one good, and that is His Father, our Father, and that is His God, our God. That is God, not Trinity, not three in one, unity in three co-eternal persons. That is not in the Bible. That is God, Theos, singular masculine noun. Verse 19, thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. We must do in order to be saved or we must know and let the spirit of God work in us as we know and as we he. Verse number 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Does that mean that the rich young ruler will inherit eternal life because he had done this? Jesus pur purposely omitted the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not be greedy. And then verse 21, Jesus said, then Jesus, beholding him and loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. The tenth commandment, thou shalt not covet, was broken. So what you are saying is we have to keep the commandments of God. Yes, it is a requirement because that is the commandment of love. 
without that standard of love, without that token of obedience to the loving God our Father, there is no loving relationship. There is no proof of love, whether in letter or in the spirit. Love is the basis of keeping the commandments. Obedience comes from love. Love is begotting, begets, begets obedience. Verse 22, and he was sad, the rich young ruler, at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. He doesn't want to give. He doesn't want to sell. He doesn't want to sacrifice, deny himself. Riches, you may be in the church. You may be giving your tithe, but if you're greedy and if you are breaking the law, the Ten Commandments, the spirit of love, the spirit of of God is not in you. You see, the, the rich young ruler kept all the commandments except one. Thou shalt not covet. He has great possessions. He loves the things of this world. And Jesus ran about and said to his, unto his disciples, How hardly sh shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God, which is very true. They may give a portion of offering or a portion of tithe, but that doesn't mean that they are not greedy. Greedy can also be found among the poor who desire more and more. Greediness indeed will judge us that our hearts are not ready to inherit eternal life. Why is it that people desire eternal life to continue with their luxurious life, with their comfortable life, or they have understood the sacrifice of the Son of God and they understood self-denial, taking up the cross of their crosses and following Jesus, the Son of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Literally, that is true today because of greed. Not one rich person who is greedy, whether he or she is nice, sincere, earnest in appearance. If the person's heart is filled with greediness and just like the rich young ruler, he cannot enter, according to Jesus, the kingdom of God. No prosperity preachers will enter into the kingdom of God. No person or worker who promotes success and possessions and things that's a token of the uh, favor of God will not enter into the kingdom of God because of the 10th commandment, thou shalt not covet. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved if the rich Pharisees will not be saved? If those who are seemingly blessed or religious workers cannot be saved, the pastors and priests cannot be saved because of greediness. They may keep the first nine, but they will not and they could not, and they do not understand the tenth. According to Jesus, they will not be entering into the kingdom of God. So who then shall be saved, the disciples ask. And Jesus, looking upon them, saying, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. If the disciples who could not understand what it meant what it meant to inherit eternal life and be saved if the rich young ruler could not understand and if those who are at the presence of Jesus the son of god while he was on earth could not understand how much more us today but the record shows that those who would like to inherit those who are desiring to be saved must do something, and that is to empty their hearts of greed, avarice. Empty their hearts of self and replace it with Jesus. Now let's go to Luke chapter 10. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, well, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said, what is written in the law, knowing what God commands is key. Knowing, but it doesn't end there. How readest thou? 
So let us go to verse number 27 of this chapter in Luke. Remember, we, we, we read Mark chapter 10. Now we, we read Luke chapter 10, the next gospel. And he said unto, unto him, thou hast answered right. This uh, Verse 27, I mean, I'm sorry. And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, verses 6, chapter 6 verses 4 and 5. Shema, O Israel. The literal God is literal one, not Trinity. Reject that, please. Trinity is not from the Bible. It's from the enemy. Thou And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. When you love God, as I've said, when you love God our Father, through his Son, because his Son revealed his Father, then the love of him, the Father is in us. Therefore, we do not love the world. We hate the world. The things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. All these carnal thoughts and carnal senses or carnality that, that enters our senses. Christ takes over through his Holy Spirit. Christ takes over our life. His holy life is now within us. And the Father and the Son is in our hearts by faith. Their spirit within us. And then we love God above all else. We love our Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. This, if we must do this, then we understand what it means to have eternal life. What it means to live an eternal life. Self-denial, taking up of the cross, following Jesus, doing good, not because we are good, but because Christ's holy life Christ, Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ is in us. His mind is in us. Christ's mind is in us. His life is in us. His Holy Spirit is in us, not someone else, not the third God, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. So what must I do to be saved? To know God? Yes. Check. To love God with all our heart? Yes. Check. Not Trinity. To love His Son? Yes. Check. To love his commandments, and that is the Ten Commandments, yes, check. Not because we wanted to be saved, but because we, we would like to inherit. We desire to inherit, and this is what we would do. We receive all this truth, and then we practice them, and then we experience them. What else? Love thy neighbor as thyself, meaning being a good Samaritan. Is that enough? Check. What, what else do I need to do? Well, if you have done this, all these things, what it is that God requires? Well, you obey the commandments, the Ten Commandments. You love God our Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. You do good to your brethren. You, you sacrifice your wealth for the sake of the health and safety and, and the uh, well-being of your neighbor, your enemy. What else needs must be done? John chapter 3, or John chapter 4. Jesus was with the Samaritan woman. And Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman about the water that he has to give. And then in John chapter 4, verse 14, we have this statement from Jesus. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman, the Samaritan woman, did not understand. And maybe some of us. What is this living water? John chapter 7 has the answer. Verse 38. He that believeth on Jesus, the Son of God, believeth on me. As the scripture hath said, out of this belly flow, shall flow rivers of living water. Exact same thing that Jesus was saying in John chapter 4 to the woman. John 7.39 gave us the answer. But this spake he of the Spirit, his Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him shall, should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Only Christ can give us this, his holy life. His living water received to us and that we have our own living water, which is Christ, Holy Spirit. Our living water must be Christ, Holy Spirit, not someone else, not the third God, the Holy Spirit. That is a 
false doctrine. Drink or receive and flow the living waters out of our belly, which is the living water of Jesus. His life, not someone else. John chapter 17 verse 1 gives us the conclusion. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Now remember, Jesus is the literal son and heaven is a literal, literal place. And in heaven is the throne of his father, the only true God. And his father, through his spirit, gave his spirit to his son. And therefore, that is what Jesus says, that they are one. The father in heaven, Jesus on earth, literally separated because of sin of man. And Jesus came to save and to reconcile, to atone at one moment to his father, the human race. Father, this is true. Jesus was not talking to his own self. He was not monologuing uh, or pan pantomiming. He was talking and the disciples understand and they were looking up to heaven, perhaps. Father, Jesus uh, addressing the only true God, his God, his father, literal father in heaven, literal son on earth. The hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. The singular masculine noun. God our Father. As thou hast given him third person. Jesus is talking on the third person. Referring to the Father. The Father gives Jesus the power. Remember in Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. All power was given to Jesus. But that is after um, this, after this last prayer of Christ on earth with his disciples. As thou hast given him, meaning the Father gave him, meaning there's no truth to co-eternal, co-equal um, statements about who Jesus is. Jesus was given all power over all flesh and that he should give eternal life as as may as thou hast given him, meaning Jesus was given the literal Son of God, divine, who became the Son of the Son, divine, who became human, was given all authority. He was not co equal, co eternal, because there's only one God. God made him equal. God declared him to be the inheritor of all things. God allowed his Son to enter into the counsels of himself. Jesus was given all power, all authority, all names, above all names, that he should give eternal life as to many as thou hast given. Jesus using the third, the third person statement referring to himself. In English, in grammar, Eliism, meaning Jesus was not referring to someone else. He was not referring to the third God. He was not referring to the second God. He was referring to himself. And he is referring to his father as the only true God. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. If you read these verses, if you read the chapters of Mark 10, and if you read the, 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 chapter, the chapter, I mean in Mark 10 and chapter in Luke 10, and you read John 4, 14, and John 17, verses um, 20, uh, 38 to 39, and now you read John 17, 1 to 3, you will have a glimpse and understanding of eternal life and what must I do or must what must you do to inherit it and be saved? What is eternal life? That they might know. Not the Trinity doctrine of the world, but the only true God, the Father of Jesus and the one whom the one whom Christ said, who sent him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Only the Father, through his Son, can give us eternal life, not Trinity. Only the Father, through his Son, can lead us how to do the good works necessary in order for us to be saved. We must do because we have the Holy Spirit of God and His Son. 
We must do because this is required. We must do not because we wanted to be saved, but we must do because we are already being saved. If we do not do, there's no proof that we are saved. Being a good Samaritan, being Christ-like because we are filled with the Holy Spirit of Christ. What must we do? Sell everything and give it to the poor. What must we do? Love for our enemies. What must we do? Take care of those who cannot take care of, of themselves. What must we do? We must do what Christ has done. And that is a requirement. It's not because we, we, we are like the Pharisees. The Pharisees, you know, is a misconception. They say good, but they don't do good. We have to say good. We have to speak good. And we have to do good. The Pharisees' heart are not right. The Pharisees' hearts are not right. We whose hearts know who the true God is, our hearts must be cleansed. And the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of the Father, their Holy Spirit, not the Trinity, will be the ones to let us flow the living fountains of living waters so that others will be blessed. Trinity will not save you, only the Father through his Son. And that is the truth. Good works is a result of our love for God and his son. And it's a manifestation of a spiritual manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God, our Father, and the Holy Spirit of Jesus, his son. If we are good Samaritans, then the spirit of Christ is in us. If we are teaching the truth about the Bible, then the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God is with us. You see, friends, there's no other way. It is required for us. It is required that we love God our Father because he first loved us through his Son. What does it mean? We only know our Father through his Son. His Son revealed not Trinity, but our Father. I hope this is understandable. Trinity will never save you. It's only Jesus revelation of his father and if we believe jesus that he is the son and that he has a father then we have the knowledge of god and that is eternal life and that is what we need to know today and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god our father not trinity and jesus christ not god the son jesus christ who is truly divine truly made by god as his only begotten son, not created, the Bible says he was made to be sin for us. So friends, there is only one God our Father, and Jesus is also divine as his Father is divine. Don't misunderstand this. Jesus was never created. He came forth from his Father. It's not creation to be begotten. It is begotten, not created. The world is confused. The world would like us to believe Trinity. Trinity will not save us. Only God our Father, through His Son, will save us. Then we do the works of God our Father through His Son. Love those who do not love us. This is the requirement of God. Love is the result or our, our production or our manifestation will be to be like Jesus, loving and worthy of praise and adoration. He revealed his Father who is a loving God. And so today it is required for all of us to keep his commandments and to know who God is through his son. May this message be understood, I pray. Amen.